Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This is Salim Akhtar Malik, your host at the Observation Post channel. On this channel, I discuss issues of national and international importance, defense and security matters, as well as important events from military history. You can interact with me on this channel by giving your views and comments, which are very important to me and which help me in fine tuning my talks, which I deliver from time to time. on this channel you can also connect with me on twitter where my address is at salim akhtar 53 in this session i'll be talking to you about the 1967 war between the arabs and israel now the 1967 war was fought between israel and the front line arab states which were egypt Jordan and Syria so they had joined together these three countries that is Egypt Jordan and Syria had joined together prior to the 1967 war uh, as a result to a warning raised by the Soviet Union the erstwhile Soviet Union in which it said that it had received information through its satellites that uh, Israel was concentrating its forces along the Syrian border and was preparing for an offensive against Syria. Now, as a result of the First World War, Palestine, which was till then part of the Ottoman Empire, it was seized from. Ottoman Empire or the Ottoman rulers by France and uh, Britain, and it was given under the jurisdiction or under the mandate of Britain by the then World Organization, the League of Nations. The League of Nations was replaced by the United Nations after the First World War. so the area was put under the british mandate till the dissolution of the ottoman empire during first world war palestine as i said was part of and the province of the ottoman empire so oh. after the war that is after the first world war britain promised to the jews that it would favor the creation of a jewish homeland in what was then palestine and uh, the jews in anticipation or as a result of their forward planning which they had started in the 18th and 19th Teen century uh, centuries, they had started colonizing Palestine. Even when it was part of the Ottoman Empire, and the Ottoman uh, rulers had not objected much to this colonization, so the Israeli or the Jews, Israel was not there. It was created in 1948. So the Jews. they bought land from the arabs and they established their agricultural communities and they rehabilitated the land and even created or built a new city which is uh, the city of tel aviv and they also built a new city of jerusalem which they called west jerusalem adjacent to the old city of jerusalem which now we known as the is jerusalem so in 1948 as a result of the un resolution after the after the end of the british mandate on palestine the united nations adopted a resolution which called for the creation of two states in palestine that is for the 
partition of Israel into a Jewish state and an Arab state. Whereas the city of Jerusalem would be placed under international control in which the followers from every faith would be allowed free access to the city. So the Jews accepted the United Nations partition plan, but the Arabs, they rejected it and attacked the state of Israel. That is the newly proclaimed state of Israel, which they had announced in May 1948. Whereas the Arabs, they were more in numbers, however, they were not properly organized, they were fragmented politically, socially, as well as economically, and their armies, even their combined armies were no match for the Israeli paramilitary forces, which were Haganah and Palmach. These two paramilitary forces they had raised during the British mandate of Palestine, and they were led by Jewish officers who had been on the general staff of the Allied forces during the First World War. So they had the experience of the First World War and they had trained these paramilitary forces into a formidable force. And easily, 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 easily defeated the combined Arab armies, which also included the Egyptian army. Now, Egyptian army at that time was again in a state of disarray, and one major Nasser, Jamal Abdel Nasser, was a staff officer with the 16th Egyptian Infantry Battalion. He later on commented very poorly about the performance of the Egyptian forces. He said that at the time when the war was going on, the Egyptian army was busy in making toilets for King Farouk, who was then ruling Egypt. However, the Jordanian army, which was led by a British origin general, uh, that is Major General Glub Pasha, it fared well, comparatively well, and it managed to capture East Jerusalem and uh, the West Bank of River Jordan, which was then annexed by the kingdom of Jordan and it became the part of the kingdom of Jordan and remained so till 1967. So except for the West Bank of River Jordan and East Jerusalem, Arabs did not fare well. However, the Egyptian army did manage to capture the Gaza Strip, which is located towards the south. In 1952, Jamal al Nasser toppled King Farouk and declared Egypt a republic. And it uh, was then renamed as the United Arab Republic. Jamal al Nasser ruled Egypt till 1970. That is till up, uh, till, uh, up till his death. In 1956, Nasser nationalized the Suez Canal, which was till then under the control of a joint French and British company known as the Suez Canal Company. So when he nationalized the Suez Canal, he prohibited the Israelis or the state of Israel from navigating through the canal. 
and uh, Israel then teamed up with Britain and France and invaded Egypt. All these three countries invaded Egypt in 1956 in what is now known as the Swiss war or the Swiss conflict. As a result of the threat given by the erstwhile Soviet Union that it would intervene in the conflict on behalf of Egypt. The United States whose president was then Dwight Eisenhower forced the United Nations to broker a peace and a ceasefire. So a ceasefire was uh, a ceasefire came into effect, which resulted in the vacation of the Israeli forces from Sinai, as well as vacation of the British and French aggression, which was in the form of air offensive. So they also vacated their aggression. And uh, one reward or one concession which was given to Israel was that the Gulf of Aqaba, which is controlled uh, at the Straits of Tehran. Now Tehran uh, Strait, uh, like any other strait, is a narrow passageway through which the ships pass. And it is located at the mouth of the Gulf of Aqaba, which links the Red Sea with the uh, Indian Ocean. And it was vital for the Israeli state for linking its uh, port of Elath, which is located on the Red Sea, to locate, uh, to connect it with the shipping in the Indian Ocean. So Israel got the rights to navigate through the Aqaba, the, that is the Gulf of Aqaba, and it declared that any attempt, any future attempt to blockade the Straits of Tehran would be considered by Israel as an act of war. United Nations peacekeeping forces were also stationed on the Egyptian soil and uh, the strip of Gaza, which was during the war, uh, again, captured by Israelis, it, it, was, uh, it was restored to Egyptian control. However, Israel refused to let the United Nations stay, uh, station its peacekeeping forces on its territory, that is the Israeli territory. In 1967, that is in May 1967, as I had mentioned earlier, the erstwhile Soviet Union raised the hair, that is, it raised an alarm that the Israelis were planning and preparing for an uh, offensive against Syria. This led to a panicky action by the Arab states, particularly Jamal Abdel Nasser, who blockaded the Gulf of Aqaba and the Straits of Tehran, which control the mouth of the Gulf of Aqaba. So Egypt blockaded the Gulf of Aqaba for Israeli shipping. And naturally, Israel had already declared that any attempt at blockading the Gulf of Aqaba through the blockade of the Straits of Tehran would be considered by Israel as an act of war. So then the three frontline Arab states, that is Egypt, Jordan, and Syria, they joined together into a defense pact where they 
determined to defend themselves against any Israeli offensive or any Israeli aggression in the future. Now, as we look back, we find that whereas Nasser had blockaded the Gulf of Aqaba, which would definitely result in Israel attacking across the Sinai Peninsula, he had not taken the war seriously. There were no serious preparations for a war with Israel or to counter and defend the Sinai Peninsula, which would event, which would be, it was for sure that it would be invaded by Israel. There were natural lines of defense available in the Sinai Peninsula, and these were some 50 kilometers to the east of Suez Canal. There is this, an escarpment or a ridge line which runs from north to south and through which pass two important passes in the Sinai. These are the Mithla Pass and the Gidi Pass. These are to the north east of the city of Suez. However, the, the Egyptians, instead of basing their defenses along the escarpment through which they, were, they could have controlled the Mithla and Gidi passes, they had their main defenses close to the Israeli border at a place called Abu Agela. Now, Abu Agela was a crossroads which controlled a series of ridge lines and sand dunes. But then the Israelis, uh, as we will see later, it, they overwhelmed the Egyptian forces in Abu Agela and uh, this opened for them all the way up to uh, the Suez Canal. So on the morning of 5th June 1967, Israel attacked. It launched a preemptive attack against 18 Egyptian airfields. Now again we see that the Egyptians had not prepared for the war. Despite the, the, the possibility that Israelis would preempt, they had not carried, they had not resorted to any combat air patrolling and they had not even dispersed their aircraft which were parked on these airfields like the civilian aircraft. So Israelis managed very easily to destroy the Egyptian air force. Uh, they say that 450 aircraft were, de were destroyed by the Israeli air force on the ground, along with all the 18 airfields which they had attacked in the morning. So by mid day, 5th June, the Israelis were in control of the skies over Egypt. The next day, that is 6th June, on 6th June, the Israeli Defense Minister, he, he had made plans for the ground offensive and Israeli forces advanced into Sinai. And the same day, the Egyptian Defense Minister, Field Marshal Abdul Hakim Amir, who had been catapulted from the rank of a major, which he was in 1952, straight to major general. He was first promoted from, from major to major general and thereafter to the rank of field marshal and was made the defense minister as well as the chief of army staff of the Egyptian army. So he ordered a withdrawal of the Egyptian forces by that time, the Israelis had overwhelmed the Egyptian forces 
at Abu Agela, which, which was uh, close to the Israeli border. And thereafter, when the Egyptian high command was uh, uh, ordered to withdraw to the west bank of Suez Canal, it was a walkover for the Israeli forces. And the Egyptian withdrawal turned into a rout in which most of the Israeli tanks, uh, correction, the Egyptian tanks, vehicles, as well as a large number of troops were destroyed by the Israeli advancing army. Thereafter, they diverted their attention to the Jordanian front and after fierce fighting, they were able to capture East Jerusalem. By that time, they had also destroyed the tiny Jordanian Air Force. And then as a result of the destruction of its Air Force, the Jordanian king also ordered the withdrawal of Jordanian forces from the West Bank of River Jordan. There were two armored brigades, Jordanian armored brigades, looking after the West Bank, and they just mounted their vehicles and left the area and crossed over into the Jordan proper territory by crossing the River Jordan. Thereafter, the Israelis, they focused on the Syrian front. Now Syria, Syrian army fought better than uh, the Egyptian army and even better than the Jordanian army. But then Hafez al-Hassad, who was then the defense minister, he ordered a withdrawal of the Syrian forces from the Golan Heights because Syrian Air Force was also destroyed and they could not withstand an Israeli ground onslaught. But then there was miscoordination from the, uh, the miscoordination between the Syrian high command and the troops on the ground. The orders for withdrawal of the Syrian forces were announced on Radio Damascus, but they were not passed onto the Egyptian army. Troops fighting the war against the Israelis. And this also resulted in a chaotic situation where they withdrew in a haphazard manner and there were a large number of casualties. As a result of this war, Israel gained control of the Gaza Strip, the Sinai Peninsula, East Jerusalem, West Bank of River Jordan, as well as the Golan Heights. And thus ended the 1967 war. And this war gave the Israelis a false sense of security and uh, gave them a false understanding that they were invincible. This is all which I wanted to say in this session. See you in the next video with a new topic. Till then, bye-bye.